Okay, hi guys. So this is our first theorem. So it's a very simple one. Um, what we're given is we're given three parallel lines, L, M, and N, and we're given two transversals, T and K. Now, what we know about T is that T intersects the lines L, M, and N at A, B, and C points, respectively. And more importantly, we also are given the fact that the distance between A and B, in other words, the length of this little line segment is the same as this little line segment, okay? We also know that the transversal K intersects the three parallel lines at the points E, F, and G. That's all we know. Now, our theorem is basically what we want to prove is that the length of EF is equal to the length of FG. In other words, we know we're given this is true, but we want to prove that, that this applies to this as well. In other words, that the length from E to F is the same as the length from F to G in the same way that the length of A to B is the same as B to C because we're given that. So that's our, what we want to prove. In order to prove things, usually you usually have to construct something. So here's our construction. Okay. We're going to draw another line, okay? So, I'm going to use a different color if I can. I'll use a different color here. I'm going to draw a line through F, but parallel to T, okay? So watch, let's try and get this as accurate as possible. Try and be as accurate as possible. There you go. Yeah, that should do. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a line this way. I'm gonna hash it just to make it easier for people. Okay, so there's the line D. So construction, I'm gonna construct D, which is parallel to T and goes through F. Okay, so that's all I've done. Now, I'm gonna label up all the other points. So that point is common for both K and D, F. Um, we start at G, let's go, we'll call this one up H and this one here, I. Okay, so there's the point I, point H, E, F is common, G, and then we still have the original A, B, and C. Okay, so here's our proof. Okay, um, if you look very carefully, this is a parallelogram, okay? Parallelogram there, as you can see. So. A, B, F, H is a parallelogram. And similarly, B, C, what we go with, I, F. B, C, I, F is a parallelogram, okay? So if that's true, if that's true, that's a parallelogram, that's a parallelogram, then the length of AB is going to be equal to the length of HF or FH, opposite sides okay, hope that makes sense, yeah, opposite sides of the parallelogram, so that and that are the same, okay and obviously BC and FI. Opposite sides. So there's, you kind of, you're setting it up, okay? But we already know that the length of AB is equal to the length of BC. That's given. 
So that must mean that if that's equal to that and that's equal to that, then as you can tell, that is equal to that. Therefore, HF is equal to FI. Okay? So, there you have it. Now, if we look at the triangles, this one is a long one, so you have to kind of look at this very careful. But if you look very carefully in these little triangles that have been formed, okay? What you can see is that that angle and that angle are going to be the same, vertically opposite angles, okay? And because of our parallel rooms, we'll be able to figure out some of the other stuff. So let's have a look at these two triangles. So we'll call these triangles EFH and FGI, I suppose. That's probably the easiest way to look at it, okay? In the triangles, EFH and FGI. Well, we know some things, okay? Obviously, we're going to know some things. We're going to know that this one is going to be equal to that one. The length of HF is going to be length of H. Fi, so we've already proven that one, okay? So see what we're trying to do is trying to show that these triangles are the same. So in this triangle, this side of this triangle is the same as this side of this triangle, okay? The angle at F is gonna be equal, sorry, I'll phrase it again, EFH, the angle EFH, this one here is equal to the angle IFG, vertically opposite, okay, and the angles at the top corners, so uh, this one here is going to be the same as that one there, because they're alternate, so let's name that one, HEF is equal, going to be equal to, so that one there is equal to that one there, FGI, um, alternate angles. So what that's really saying is that those two triangles are congruent. Therefore, the triangles are con congruent in other words they're the same triangles and of course if they're the same triangles because they're the same triangles i've shown that those sides would have to be the same in other words ef would have to be equal to fg because they're corresponding sides in other words the, the third side yeah Okay, so hope that makes sense. I'll go through it once more, okay, from the top. What you're given? Three parallel lines, two transversals, T and K. These transversals, you label them A, B, C, where they intersect, E, F, and G, okay? What you want to prove is that if they're the same distance apart, then the other transversal, they'll be the same distance apart. Now, obviously, this makes logical sense, but how do you prove it? Okay, so you're trying to prove that EF is equal to FG. You're proving it basically by finding out information about the two triangles that are missing when you draw another transversal that's parallel to the original one. So all I've done is created D, which is parallel to T, but it intersects at F. So in other words, it's knocking out F, so I don't have one less thing to worry about in terms of writing down stuff. Okay, so these are parallelograms. That's a parallelogram. That's a parallelogram. And because they're parallelograms, we already know that this is the same as this, which would make that distance the same 
as that distance. So those two sides of those triangles are now the same. Those angles are also the same because they're vertically opposite. And those angles are also the same because they're alternate. In other words, if you look very carefully, see that parallel line, see that line going down and see how that parallel line continues. It forms what's called a Z shape. And the Z rule is that you have alternate angles. Okay, so if I have two angles and one side, okay, that's one, one of the junior cert requirements for congruency. Okay, angle, side, angle. That's one of, you can have side, 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 angle, side, or angle, side, angle. And there's another one, congruency, where you have a right angle. If you have a right angle and two sides, then the same, then the two right angles are the same. But that means that this is congruent. And if it's congruent, I have all the information about it, about its sides. So I can make an inference about the side I want, which is EF and FG. Because if this side is the same, that side is the same, and all the angles are the same, then the corresponding sides are the same. In this case, the EF is FG. Right, hello. So here we have another theorem. So this one's a bit more abstract theorem, in my opinion, anyway. So what are we given? We're given a triangle ABC. We're given a line that goes through parallel to BC, the triangle, in such a way that it creates a ratio of S's to T. And all I've done is I've labeled the points of contact of this line, call them D and E. Okay, and what we, that's, that's, our, that's our given. So what we want to prove is that CE, the ratio of the length of CE to EA is the same as the ratio on the other side. In other words, if that's five is to four, this is broken up into five is to four as well. Doesn't mean it is four out of the four, but it's broken up in the ratio of five is to four. Okay, so that's what we're trying to prove. Okay, so we need a construction. This construction's a little bit more Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to mark some points, okay? So we're going to break up S into smaller equal points, okay? So little segments, we're going to chop it up. Now again, you don't have to be accurate in your chopping, just... So you see, I'm just chopping it up into equal segments. Now the lengths of the lines aren't the same, but the distance between each line is going to be the same. That's the key. Okay, so each of those distances is going to be the same distance. So I'm going to, I have to write this in English, obviously. Draw lines parallel to BC at equal intervals. Okay, so listen, let's try and label these. Let's call the first one D0, okay? And You'd have D1, then D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, the whole way up to DS. So that would have all the S's and contained in them, okay? And then when you get past DS, we'll add an extra one on, DS1, the whole way up to DS plus T. So now you've got the total. So up here, you just have as far as DS, all the divisions up to as far as however, whatever number S is. And here you're just adding in each node division until you get to the teeth division. In other words, it's all the DSs plus the DT will get you up to that last one there at A, okay? Now they're all parallel. That's the trick here. Because these are parallel to L and because they've been broken by a transversal, we have
we use the previous theorem, it's called theorem 11. Because all the line segments are cut in the same way. So however many line segments to get to ds is the same amount of line segments to get to e. And however many line segments from ds plus 1 to ds plus t is the same as it's going to be on this side. So as you can see, the line segments are going to be the same because the previous theorem, if you remember, said that if that's broken up, AB is equal to BC, well then EF is equal to FG. So if you remember it from the previous one, it's the same, okay? So E cuts AC in the same ratio that D cuts AB. So that must mean that CE compared it to EA is the same as S is to T. So it's not as concrete a proof, but it is the same proof because you're following on from another proof. All you're doing is using the previous proof by breaking it all up. So you're taking multiple versions of that as opposed to just one line. If you look at it carefully in the original one, we just had three lines broken it up into two segments. Now we have an infinite amount of lines broken up into an infinite amount of segments, but the rule still follows. Okay? Hi there. So um, the next theorem is a very simple theorem. We're, what are we given? We're given two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Now, interestingly, in triangle A, uh, the angle A is the same as in triangle, the second triangle D. And similarly, the B is equal to the E and the C angle is equal to the F angle. So the angles are the same in both, even if the triangles aren't the same. Okay, so they're not congruent. We're not talking about congruency. Okay, and what we want to prove very simply is that if I take the length of AB and I divide it by the length of DE, whatever number that is should be the same as if I take any other corresponding side's length and divide it by the corresponding So in other words, the ratios of the sides are the same, corresponding sides are the same. So you think, how the hell am I going to prove that? Okay, well, listen, it's very easy. All we have to do is mark a point on this side. So whatever that distance is, I'm going to work down to that distance there. Let's call it X. And obviously, I'm just going to draw parallel Cross, so it's parallel and let's call it a side y just for the fun okay so in other words I'm just going to place this triangle inside in this triangle so in here I have e and in here I have f because they're the same they're corresponding sides that's a corresponding angles because we've already stated that okay so that's the only thing I'm going to do so because it's parallel that distance there is that distance there, that distance there is that distance there. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Okay, now here's my proof. Okay, um, the triangle AXY and the triangle DEF are congruent. You can do um, side angle side, uh, angle side angle whatever you want but they're congruent okay so that means that axy the angle at axy is equal to the angle at def okay because they're corresponding and that also means that the angle at axy is equal to the angle at abc so in other words, AXY and ABC, they're the same, okay? Which does make sense, okay? Two parallel lines corresponding, okay? 
And what does that mean? Well, that obviously means then that xy is parallel to bc. Okay? Well, then, going from our old friend, if that and that, I've got a parallel lines between them, well, obviously, that means that the line at AB divided by the line at AX should be the same as the line at AC divided by the line at AY. So let's look at that. The line at AB divided by the line of AX should be the same as the line at AC divided by the line at AY, just from our previous theorem. Remember, if that's broken up by S and T, that's also broken up by S and T. Okay? So that's theorem 12. Okay? So, if that's true, well then let's just replace some of these. Keep the AB. Is there another side that's equal to AX? Yeah, we do have DE. Keep the AC, or keep the AC. And, sorry, I mean, keep the AC, I don't want to keep the AC. Yeah, and DF. DF. So, that's those two proved. And obviously, you can similarly prove, start with one of them, you can prove the middle one as well. I'm not gonna bother, but you can. So there's your proof of it.